A young lanky boy sat by the train window, probably thinking how life would hence unfold. Komonio, the boy, was on his way to an engineering college. He was being offered a degree in metallurgical engineering. The year was 1966 and the college was Regional College of Engineering, Durgapur. Jovial and fun-loving, Komonio was popular among friends, but all was not well. The winds of revolution were blowing through college canteens and classrooms world over, and REC was no exception. Young Komonio led movements for basic amenities in the college. The political situation in Bengal at that time was on boil. College campuses across the state were not left untouched from the violent and turbulent situation. These only toughened him for the long journey that beckoned him. In these challenging and tumultuous circumstances, Komonio completed his bachelor's and proceeded on to the next phase of his life. He moved to a place that was known as the Mecca of metallurgy in India, Banaras. Banaras is very old. Twain believed that it's older than history, older than legend, older than tradition and looks twice as old as all of them put together. A university stood on the southern part of the city. It used to be a metallurgist's dream. It was here that our story's protagonist met his guru, friend and mentor for life. In 1971, Komunio arrived here for an MSc engineering degree under the tutelage of Professor P. Ram Chandra Rao. Presence of eminent metallurgists, Professor T. R. Anantraman and Professor S. Lele in the department ensured Komunio's thorough training. Upon completing his MSc, he immediately registered for a PhD in BHU. Meanwhile, he was also appointed a lecturer in the department. After his PhD, Komunio was with Professor Hubert I. Aronson at Carnegie Mellon University from 1980 to 1982. Though the stay was brief, yet Professor Aronson left a deep impression on young Komunio. The department at BHU was deeply involved with rapid solidification at that time and the work being done there was well received worldwide. However, some results baffled Komunio and his colleagues. The electron micrographs showed twinning in alloys where it was not expected. Unaware of all this development in India, around the same time, Daniel Schechtman was working on similar compositions. His aim was to improve the strength of aluminium alloys. He observed similar patterns from his sample. What was common between an 11th century palace in Spain and these patterns? The answer was quasi-periodicity. Danny suspected that his pattern was not due to twinning. He proposed that this was because of a new class of materials called quasi-crystals. This was year 1982. By this time, Komunio had moved to the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, as an assistant professor. Upon his arrival in Bangalore, Professor D.K. Banerjee, the erstwhile director, was gracious enough to help Komunio during the settling in period. The Department of Metallurgy here was established in the year 1945. Komunio and his colleague, Professor S. Ranganathan, were still puzzled by the curious case of twinning in aluminium alloys. We used to have a, a, a strong group of young faculties mm. and we used to meet at weekends. Mm. And Rahul Pandit was one of them. And Rahul Pandit actually alerted me about this paper in physics. Because a metallurgist, I never used to read physical. He got a preprint of this paper from US and immediately he showed the paper. And next day I started working on this. And then Professor Ranganathan, next week after the weekend, came back. He was away and I showed him that. And both of us decided to work on this. They realized that this was something big. The paper was the missing part of the puzzle in their work. They published their results within a month and the articles continued to be highly cited. They 
this was the advent of an era where Asian and Indian researchers led the world to a better understanding of various facets of quasi crystals. This was also when Gomonio travelled extensively as a visiting scientist to various major institutions. On course of this travelling, he developed friendship with many people, a bond which he maintains till date. Working on quasi crystal initial time. And we also realized that there is a professor from China who was publishing paper very similar materials. So I wrote to him to visit him for a brief period. At that time there was no relations between India and China and it was very difficult to visit China. Who immediately replied and asked me what why a day or two, why not a month? I agreed and Professor Kuo solved my visa problem by arranging my visa in Japan. So after making friendship with Aoki and Sai, I travelled to China where I met Professor Kuo and his student Dong. And that is how my interactions with Kuo, Professor Kuo and Dong began. Among these collaborations, the earliest was with Professor Brian Cantor at the Oxford University. In year 1994, our protagonist was promoted to a full professorship. Next year, in 1995, Professor Chattopadhyay was awarded the prestigious Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award. The citation read that Dr. Chattopadhyay has made pioneering contributions towards synthesis and characterization of new classes of materials, including quasi crystals and nanocomposites, through his sustained experimental and theoretical investigations. Being a well respected award, this was a big moment. In 2001, Professor Chattopadhyay was appointed the Chairman of Materials Research Centre. He was there for about four years. Meanwhile, there was a growing need for a dedicated microstructural characterization centre in the Institute. Professor Chattopadhyay took the challenge of setting up a state-of-the-art microscopy centre in the campus upon himself. Throughout my collaboration over the years, I realized that we need very high quality facility in a manner where a large number of people can access. So when I became chairman, I, together with Professor Bikram Jairam, decided to acquire sophisticated facility. And our first, our first success for this was a fist grant for buying field emission scanning electron microscope. Writing for grants to all major funding agencies in the country, he strove hard for this cause. By 2004, with generous supports from the Institute, DST, CSIR, Department of Atomic Energy and DRDO, his dream started taking shape. This all started around 2002. The building work started at 2003 and it was inaugurated in 2005. We had at that time a scanning electron microscope, a latest technical electron microscope and also a iron microscope thanks to the support of Professor Vikram Jairam and Professor Sanjay Vishwas, who got the money from CSIR to buy that microscope. Life is not always bliss, and it is true for all of us without exception. So is it for Professor Chattopadhyay. On 13 December 2005, his longtime mentor, guide, and friend, Professor Aronson, passed away. It was a moment of great grief and sorrow. 
As per his last will, Professor Aronson had left a portion of his assets for Professor Chattopadhyay. In a fitting tribute to him, he used these assets to institute a chair professorship at the department in memory of Professor Aronson. Now that he was a senior faculty member, various administrative responsibilities started catching up with Professor Chattopadhyay. After he completed his term in MRC, he was appointed the chair at Metallurgy Department. He got down to work immediately, renovating the department building, purchase of new equipments, recruiting faculties, etc. All were the signs of change visibly apparent in the department corridors. When I took the chairmanship of the department, it was a very challenging time. Due to retirement, the department was shrinking. We have come down to nine faculty at that point. And the first task was to get new faculty. Though neck deep in administrative responsibilities, he always balanced it with his research. Some of his work, which he did on laser processing, solidification processing, bulk metallic glasses, and embedded alloy particles during this period is highly regarded. He was also instrumental in renaming the department to Materials Engineering during the Diamond Jubilee celebrations in 2006-2007. Name change of the department was a very difficult task. There is an intense division, primarily based on emotions. And it took series of meetings to convince that there is really a real need. He continued to climb higher rungs in the administrative ladder. In 2009, he was elevated to the office of the chairman, Division of Mechanical Sciences. Mechanical Sciences being the largest division in the institute, now his responsibilities included looking after the administrative matters of six departments and two centers, amongst others. IISC completed 100 years of existence in 2009. A conference was organized to mark the centenary celebrations. Alumni from all over the world descended to Bangalore to brainstorm where ISC should go from here. It emerged that for over 100 years of existence, the institute had done path-breaking fundamental research. But in the area of applied sciences, there was potential to do much more. One area which directly touches the lives of the common man is energy security. The highly interdisciplinary nature of the field implies that it is necessary to bring experts from diverse fields like semiconductor physics, machine design, fluid dynamics, material selections, etc. under a single roof. The challenges associated caught Professor Chattopadhyay's attention and he enthusiastically joined the Institute Energy Initiative. In 2012, it culminated in the setting up of the Interdisciplinary Center for Energy Research, of which he was appointed the convener. His wife Sukanya has been with him throughout this journey. However, due to heavy workload, he is not able to devote enough time to her and the family. But he strives to make the most out of the time which he spends with them. In those moments, he transforms from a passionate scientist to a committed family man. Uh, he's a very good uh, counsellor and whenever you require support or whenever you are in uh, trouble, okay, he gives you or he counsels you in that way so you feel comfortable. That is one great thing. If you are fall sick or if you have any Mm, a professional mm, problem or family, anything. So that he does. Okay, very good, very good counselor. Throughout Professor Chattopadhyay's journey, students have been his constant companions. 
right from his first PhD student, he has shared a very special relationship with them. In this ruthlessly professional world of academia, he has always given personal care and support to his students. All his former students will agree that he has made them feel at home before scolding them for results. Having supervised 32 PhDs and 54 masters, he has become the head of an extended family, which in some sense is an institution in itself. He has given ample freedom to every student, rather than forcing his ideas on them. Though he is nowadays short of time due to his various engagements, his office is always open for students. It has been a perennial mystery for us how he finds time from his packed schedule to magically appear in the lab during evenings and scold us regularly. Our nation is home to more than a billion people. Just like the story, each of these billion people have a unique life story to tell. But you will find a common thread running through most of these stories. Even though full of potential and ambition, most of us have a subdued appetite for risk. Perhaps the risks along the path keep hinting at the inherent fear of losing. For us all, there's always so much at stake. But once in a while, rises a person. A person who has broken free from the shackles of this fear. A person who is bold enough to take risks. He's someone who willfully wanders off the beaten track because the comfort of the known does not allure him. Be it a quantum leap or an incremental success, we owe all our progress to him. Though they are few in number, but such people exist in every field. Society since time immemorial has progressed due to such people. It continues to do so today. And even if countless springs and autumns pass by, we will still owe all our progress to these very people. Life is a journey for them and not the destination. We bestow upon them this high position because they are capable of shouldering this momentous responsibility. We the lesser mortals know them as leaders. <laughs>